Well, brothers and sisters, what is going on? This is still Sermon in the House, Wednesday evening with another video. As always, do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. Links are posted in the box down below. This is my preview for Week 17 between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Baltimore Ravens. Matchup number two with these guys as the first time they met. Mitch Trubisky handed Baltimore the game with three interceptions. And the Steelers lost at home 16-14. A game that really wasn't close. A game that Baltimore just really dominated from head to toe, if you really look at it. But um, it's three weeks later. And the Ravens, I, I believe, still not have lost a game since then. While the Steelers have actually done pretty decent lately. We've won five out of our last seven, but Baltimore has been hot too, taking like, or you know what, now that I think about it, the Ravens have, the Ravens lost to the Cleveland Browns back in week 15, but still the Ravens taken six out of their last seven, whatever it is, they've been playing great too. And there are implications on the line for this game. The Ravens are trying to keep pace with the Bengals, and they're trying to steal the North away from the Cincinnati Bengals. And the Pittsburgh Steelers, really the only thing that we're playing for at this point is to just finish strong. You know, because one more loss for us, we're eliminated from playoff contention, and it'll be Mike Tomlin's first losing season as a head coach, as you guys all know. But I think this team is just playing to just finish strong. We're coming off an emotional victory over the Raiders on Franco Harris night. And I think just the only thing that we really look forward to is just developments. So yes, there is no hype for this week as there was hype in my first preview. You take a look at developments though. You look at Kenny Pickett, it starts with him, you know. He had a he had a good night against Vegas. I mean, it wasn't amazing or anything. It wasn't spectacular. But Kenny Pickett, like I said, stepped up to the plate when he needed to the most. This team was trailing the entire game until under the two-minute warning in the game. And Kenny Pickett, who, had th who threw an interception earlier in the game on a really bad pass, to be honest with you, just figured if if no one else is going to step up to the reins and no one else is going to, you know, take command of this team, I'm going to do it. It doesn't matter if I'm a rookie. I'm going to do it. And that's exactly what Kenny Pickett did. Conducted a drive, two crucial conversions that led to the game-winning touchdown pass to George Pickens, and Kenny Pickett is riding off on playing pretty good football lately. And it's just all about his developments going forward because Kenny Pickett, it, it's obvious that he's going to start for this game and he most likely will start against the Cleveland Browns in Week 18. And there is literally no reason to not believe that he won't be the starter next year as well. This is our franchise quarterback. And the first time he played Baltimore, he suffered a concussion against them. And I think he's out there because he want because you know while Kenny Pickett is not a Pittsburgh native, okay, the kid's from New Jersey, but while he is from Jersey, he knows what the atmosphere is like over here in Pittsburgh. We're prideful. Our standards are very high. We have high expectations, and we want to see our team, no matter how bad or good they are, we want to see them go out there, and we especially want to see them beat the Baltimore Ravens. Anytime these two teams play, it's a slobber knocker on defense. There's going to be little to no offense unless it's like, I don't know, the the killer bees against, like, if the Ravens had an offense that matched, like, the 84-49ers or something. But you can always expect a low-scoring game, and it's going to come down to which quarterback makes the fewest mistakes. And... We can keep asking ourselves if Lamar Jackson's going to start this game for the Ravens. And I'm telling you right now, as a Steeler fan, I want Lamar to start this game. Because I honestly think 
we have a better chance of beating the Ravens if Lamar plays. Lamar does not do well against the Steelers in his career. He really hasn't done well. And in the first matchup, the Ravens used their three-headed monster on offense, and you just plug Tyler Huntley into the equation, which is why I think Tyler Huntley is a good backup for him because he knows and fits the Ravens' offense really well, well enough for him to be successful. And that's just what Baltimore does. They're going to run it down your throat, and they're going to stampede all over you. They're going to chew time off the clock. They had over 200 yards on the ground collectively from Tyler Huntley and J.K. Dobbins the first time they played us. Now they're throwing Gus Edwards into the mix. So that's your so that's your uh, main matchup there. Baltimore's rush attack against our rush defense. Rush defense, as I keep saying over and over again in every single video, this rush defense is very inconsistent. But it's coming off, in my opinion, our most impressive performance on Saturday. Josh Jacobs, the league-leading rusher, only could muster 45 yards on the ground against us. 45 yards. So, needless to say, this rush offense absolutely needs to duplicate what they did and then some against this Baltimore Ravens team who is playing for a division title. And we can knock them out of contention of clinching it this week. We need to beat them, and then the Bengals need to do their part in beating Buffalo Monday night. So that's the matchup right there. Their rush attack against our rush defense. The unstoppable force against the immovable object, if you will. It's going to come down to guys like T.J. Watt stopping the rush. It's going to come down to guys like Tyson Alou finally breaking out and stopping the rush. It's going to come down to Cam Hayward building off his defensive player of the week, you know, status that he had and him having another strong night. He lit it up against Vegas, something I forgot to say in my post game. Cam Hayward had a phenomenal game against the Raiders and he won defensive player of the week. So it's going to come down to Cam Hayward leading the troops of this front and stopping the run. It's going to come down to Larry Ogunjobi keep doing what he's doing with stopping the rush. It's going to even come down to guys like Miles Jack and Devin Bush with stopping the rush. The point is, whoever starts a quarterback, it could be Lamar, it could be Tyler Huntley, it don't matter who's a quarterback for Baltimore. The point is, we need to put a spy on the quarterback for the Ravens. And that way, when he's out there making a throw... We force them to make bad decisions because they're fully anticipating us bringing the house. But you bring in a guy like Miles Jack, you bring in a guy like Devin Bush, and you maybe even give Mark Robinson his chance finally. I don't anticipate that to be the case this year. You put a spot, you put any one of those three guys as a spy, you can make the quarterback cause a turnover and cause an interception. And that's the main problem that the Ravens have had with playing us in the past with Lamar Jackson. They're a predictable offense. They're an offense that's easily that's able to be stopped dead in their tracks. And if our defense just plays up to key with it, we can limit them. But it's going to come down to Baltimore's rush defense, too, because for as inconsistent as Baltimore's defense is, they do have a rather strong rush game. Guys like Patrick Queen has been the catalyst of that defense. Calais Campbell's had a really good year. I think Tyus Bowser's still with them. And now you add in Roquan Smith. This Ravens rush defense is very strong, and I don't anticipate a lot of rush yards being put on the board. I think it's going to come down to offense simply because both these offenses are pretty subpar. Ravens fans, they don't like Greg Roman the way that we don't like Matt Canada. It's predictable offense. So, well, all that being said, my keys to victory are this. The Ravens have held their opponents to 14 or under in six of their last seven games. And the Steelers averaged 17 points a game this year. If there is a time for the Pittsburgh Steelers to score 17 points, this is the week to do it. Because we know this defense can step up. We've held our opponents 
to 17 or fewer points in five straight games. We have not allowed opponents to break more than 20 against us since that Bengals game back in week 12. So continue, or uh, was it week 11? Whenever the second Bengals game was. We haven't allowed our opponents to score more than 20 points against us since the second Bengals game. Now, I am not condoning us to be conservative with offense. I am not condoning us to have sloppy play calling once again. What I am saying is, if you can get at least 17 points on these guys, your chances of winning are very high because this is a Ravens defense that does not allow a lot of points lately. And this is a defense that doesn't allow a lot of points either. You know, it may not be Sunday night football worthy, but it does have massive implications that are on the line. While I don't anticipate us to make the playoffs, I don't anticipate us to make a deep run, I do anticipate us to just play hard in these final two games. I don't care what you got to do. Finish the season strong. Because now this team is starting to play like a team that's like, you know what? We're rebuilding, but we can be a little bit competitive when they should have been like that all year. And they really haven't. You know? So that's really all I got to say about this preview here. The defense has to keep doing their thing. The offense needs to be able to crack 17 or more. And just the rush defense altogether needs to step up. Not saying the pass defense isn't important. Pass defense was phenomenal on Saturday night. Allowing The defense allowed only one touchdown. That was the first drive of the game for the Raiders. But you get three interceptions off a guy like Derek Carr, who's going to be benched this game against the 49ers, should I mention. I expect a lot better out of this pass defense because you can get a guy like Derek Carr who's been in the league for over a decade for about a decade now. You can do that to a backup quarterback. Do not lose to a backup quarterback in this game. Don't let a backup quarterback end your season because we already did that back in uh back in week 17 3 years ago. That already happened. We don't need to see a repeat of that against these Ravens against RG3 of all people. Is that guy even still in the league? I don't know. The point is, don't let a backup be the reason that your season's over. Go out there, be competitive, do what you need to do to salvage at least one more win and salvage a split. I ain't hyping this game up because we don't have any implications. I ain't hyping this game up because I don't expect us to do any of these things. But you guys know how I feel about the Baltimore Ravens. I can't stand them. They're my like like I said a couple weeks ago. If if the Flyers never existed, the Ravens would be my most hated team in all sports. I can't stand them. You want to make up for the season that's been very uh, subpar to say the least. The very least you can do is split with the Ravens. It's the very least you can do. There have been times where the Ravens were awful and they've beaten us like in 2015 when they swept us and they had pretty much their whole team injured and they swept us. Final week of 2007, we had clinched the North and the Ravens were 4-11 going in that game. The Ravens beat us. And then there were times where we weren't so great and we beat them like in 03, like in 2012. Just get the split of these guys and finish the season strong. That's all I'm asking from you guys. No more laziness. It's about developments with Kenny Pickett, with Najee Harris, with George Pickens. If you guys saw my community post, I said Jordan Addison would look, look, would look real nice in black and gold. If we get a chance to draft this guy this spring, do not pass on him. Don't do it. I still want us to take an offensive line, uh, an O-lineman with our first pick, but you can't pass on a guy like Jordan Addison. You just can't. But, yeah, getting I, I know I was getting off topic. But, yeah, it's Steelers-Ravens, Sunday Night Football. 
Let's just get the split of these guys. Like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Links are posted down below. This is Steel Sermon. Checking on out for the night. May God be with you all.